Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farm and Life at the Forge. So this is the first episode of the year for us. Um, going to be a lot of tractors in this video. Yeah, it's going to be all tractors. So first of all, we want to wish you a happy new year. Um, we hope you enjoyed your new year. Hope you enjoyed Christmas and hopefully all good things um, to come this year. So today's video is all about tractors. So dad will be showing you the two machines he has now put on the back of the the back of the 8730 and the back of the 8210. Um, so I'll show you them, what's on the back of them now for the winter time. And then we will be taking off the, and then we'll be taking the cab off the Ford 7000. Um, so that is going into the workshop dad has already explained um what his plans are so he's not going fully restoring it he's just going kind of um preserving it so doing up a few bits on it and uh yeah so we're taking the cab off and then that will be going into the workshop so you get to see that so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video our new year's resolution <coughs> or mine anyways my new year's resolution for this year is to um focus a bit more on the youtube um so that means being a bit more consistent with the videos which i definitely have not been last year and trying to get better quality videos dad got a new microphone for christmas um or should i say he got a microphone because everybody has been asking for him to get a microphone he already has two different microphones um but this time he has now got a cordless microphone so a little clip one there it goes onto his camera but so far um but so far there seems to be an echo on it so i haven't got it fully working yet but this year we will try and get better quality audio and better quality video um so it's not as shaky and um yeah that's that's our aim for 2022 so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always if you do don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more episodes on our farm and lives here in france the 87 here uh we, had, we were at that yesterday changed the oil and filters in it and uh the filter holds an awful lot of oil and we have it back on the mux brother so um the old power shaft but i got a new power shaft first so that the uh, people were on about the old power shafts on the right to change it. So the mux powder and all is ready to roll and uh, there's just a few more bits of greasing up on this. So then here we have our tub feeder. I don't think anyone ever seen that working. We used it a bit last year but we're nearly all bales now and I found it it's just taking that little bit longer to chop up the bales. So that's why we got the pro slice from uh, ProDig um so we can chop the bales uh, especially to put maybe uh two whole crop or a whole crop and two normal bales and then a small bit of straw because <laughs> you need uh the way i'm doing it now is i'm leaving two bales of straw at the end of the pen and it's amazing even the suckler cows how the the wheat is. now here these chains she feeds she feed left or right no bother uh but i just have to have to take a link out of these chains i've been adjusted to the last now we have that we have that about um oh, must have it seven years so i might put it on the 82 even though there's a water leak on that and uh I'm always topping up the water. It's not going into the block or anything, but it's leaking somewhere. I don't know what. But I was going to take the bonnets and that off when I'm spraying the 7000 and spray the bonnets on that because they're very pitted. Well, they're not pitted, but the paint is gone. I might do it with the cab. So I might put it on the tub feeder for a while 
And then when I'm finished with the 83, I'll uh, put it on that. Now I used to always have it on the 77, but I'm thinking on selling the 77, and I'm going to sell the loader off of the 82. So this is the tub feeder here. It has its own wind skills. No, no, it wants to be cleaned up. Now, with this machine, it has its own battery and all. So, if you had only one tractor, you could uh, still see the weights on it. But it's a little bit hard to start it off when you want to start it. So, um, that's the oil. It's a bit low now as well. No, it's not leaking. But uh, it's a Bel Air. Now, uh, I was told they were a good make when I was buying it. Uh, that's the only one I ever had. I took these off here on the back. I had them in there, there was nothing wrong with them, but I was always uh, back in into things. There was two big handles over them, they were always uh, getting caught in things when you have to reverse. It has good tires on it, and it's a double, uh, it's a double rotor. See that double rotor holds 13 or 14 cubic meters, maybe a bit more. I'm not exactly sure. It holds nearly well, depending on the way you pack it or how quick you're packing it. But you could put over four ton in it. Uh, but if you're going to fill it real quick, especially with bales, it's inclined to throw some all over the side. Now, if someone has a railing on here, and there is an extension you can get for it, but one of my sheds, I'm bet to go into it, so I don't need an extension. And plus, it's, if I fill two of them, it does me with the one I'm using around bales. So, uh, just shorten the chain on that, <coughs> and that's all that has to be done on that. There's the controls there for it, and uh, it's just all dusty there now. So there, uh, well actually that's the first job to get done. The muck spread now uh, won't be done until after Christmas. And uh, I defi and we'll put some maize in it as well for the, the cows with calves. So uh, at the minute now I'm just uh, chopping up the bales and leaving it along the passageway. And uh, it's just not feeding the cows the way I'd like to feed them, especially with calves on the cows out the fields are just getting bales in the feeders. So, I'm here at the 7000. I want to take the cab off it. I was trying to put this camera on the stand to do it, but I had no proper stand for it. This is not the GoPro. Uh, just to loosen off these here now with the Milwaukee. And I have them loosened there. They are loose in there. So it just lifts it off and go at the steering box. I'll have to make a, a proper stand for this because uh, the better on the stand is now what. So I'll uh, get Laura to hold the camera and she'll, you'll see us lifting it off. For last summer, uh, it takes less than 10 minutes between getting the sockets and getting everything. There's four bolts, the steps and all. I wasn't 100% sure, they all stay behind. Okay, it makes it easy to get in and out of. It wants a new uh, bush in there. And uh, it'll be lovely for the summer. It actually looks better without the cab. Uh, but you want the cab as well. 
So when I have the cab done now as well, uh, it'll be very practical. Now I'm going to try, I was telling you on the last video, I was going to push uh, new tires, but I'm going to look for a bit wider wheels for it. Uh, they look a little bit miserable under it. Uh, I won't spread the, the mud guards because they're okay. I'll just I'll do the wheels white there on the foot. So that's it, she's very clean. Uh, she looks very she even looks bigger without the cab on. And uh, so I'll just do the the to do the what they call it, the the oil seal and the power steering there. Take this out. And under here there's a small little weave here of diesel, the overflow pipe where it goes into the tank wants to be soldered. So that's why I want to take this off and just check it out on the and it wants a new track right in here. And that's all I'm doing, it's spraying the bonnet. And um, have have the paint and all, just sand it down now and uh, I'll show you I have a, a machine for spray, uh, not your normal yoke. So uh, uh, I might take that off it because there's a toolbox at the back. I might take that off and attach it somewhere up here, spray it blue, because it's not uh, uh, in the way, or, or it's kind of in the way. So I think that's all I have to say about it. Uh, a wet, miserable day here, and grand for these jobs. So tomorrow, the next three days, now we're probably very warm, so we're going at uh, Muck. And we have another machine here. You want to see that? So we have to take this out, this machine out to the fields. Uh, and this is all the only piece I show of it to you. And you can guess what it is. So it's on the 87, the big white tires on it. Because uh, where I'm going will be our say, softest piece of the ground. So the next time you see this, you'll be in action. And uh, if anyone can figure out what it is. I never seen one until I came here. So we use it every year in certain places. Last year Laura wasn't here when I was at, so uh, the next time you see that it'll be in action. Just what we use here, I can see a lot of guys using ratchet straps for lifting. Uh, you're better off to be using proper slings because uh, the ra they're all doubled, takes a fit. Now this cab is not heavy, but they're all well doubled, the proper slings and each. I have four or five of them and they all have different weight things. Uh, that's a two ton, that's, the cab is not two ton, it's only uh, uh, as it was, it's not that heavy. But uh, the ratchet shafts on the sharp edges will cut real quick. They don't cut, it takes a fair bit to cut them because uh, they're designed for that. So uh, I'm not saying what you do, but uh, they're the job if you're doing any lifting. That or a chain, don't be using ratchet shafts because I've seen, uh, I often did use them one time and I've seen them to snap and uh, you don't want that to happen. But um, no, a ratchet shaft might work there, but I've got into the habit of using just slings now the whole time. And if you did have an accident, you're not covered over here on those. So that'll do. Bye. Here's the boss coming to check it out. What do you think? What do you think you're 5,000 now? It's 7,000, yeah. Huh? Looks bigger. Yeah. Will you be on that this year? Of course. Yeah. It's bigger without the cab. It does, yeah. <laughs> so we have the 7,000 back here in the workshop. Uh, cab is off it. Uh, definitely not changing that cab now because it's a lot more practical than your normal Ford cab. Uh, to have it like that for the, the summer and it only takes a few minutes. So what I'm gonna do is 
I told you in the last video I'm going to put a, a steel roof on the cab and I'll build in lights in the front and back and uh, what do you call it? I have all the switches on the cab so when I'm taking it off it's just one wire and it'll be fused and all so uh, yeah it needs to be it needs to be done now because it's getting uh, a little bit pitted and send off all that so uh, that's it all these all these here stay with the tractor so I wasn't fully sure that they would come off some of it has to come off with the cab but um, no bother at all uh, a few seconds takes it off well not seconds and uh, that's it um, I'll fix that eye leak now I'm not ripping it in this shed I'm going to put it over as the service shed I call it so uh, because if something goes wrong with the Manitou or something breaks or anything like that I need to get in here to do a bit of welding or that so if I rip this um, something will surely go wrong. Now the only thing I hadn't thought of was uh, when the cab is off I have to have uh, a beacon light so I might make up a bracket here and on the, on the mountain here to have a uh, beacon light because they don't mind if your lights is not working but you're not allowed to go the road here without you're not allowed to go the road here without a, a beacon light so that's it and I think that's all I have to say about it um, as I said I might get wider tires for the front of it I'm going to there's a scrapyard not too far away from here, but since COVID came along, uh, you, you have to just tell them what you want and before you go over and uh, it's just nice to go in and root around and uh, sometimes you find things. For my Dexter tractor now, I found a lot of the little bits over there, little bits of panels and all that. Uh, but say on this tractor now and most of the tractors here in France, there's very seldom this piece is missing. Uh, the French are kind of good at keeping uh, tractors together. They don't take off pieces and throw them away. So uh, <coughs> it looks a lot bigger now with um, with the cab off, and um, I know there won't be a roll bar on it, but uh, it'll be just maybe turning hay and doing the few bits and pieces. Uh, I know these things can happen at any job. But um, I'm not putting the roll bar on it. So I have the wheels to spray white, and I think that's all I have to say about it. Uh, don't take off that toolbox there off the top because it's uh, in the way. And uh, take out the steering box now next, and check just check the word when I have the dash or the when I have all this off. I just check that, and I think the bush, yeah, the bu normally the bushing on the top of them is not a big job goes but it's okay and I was going to put the, the dynamo back on it but uh, the alternator is a better job when you're not using it that often this time of the year the alternator charges the battery up better but if you had the dynamo on it and you weren't doing much uh, you'd, ha you'd have to charge the battery now and again especially in cold weather so uh, that was it, looking forward to going ahead now and then moving over to the other shed there now after a while and uh, it wants to be serviced as well. Uh, there's the battery, well it's not, there was a bigger battery in it but that one does okay. And uh, everything is on it, she's just dusty now after, well she turned uh, Many acres. She would have turned maybe uh, three three hundred acres of hay this year, um, a couple of times. So uh, that was it. Uh, what do you call it? Leave it at that. No. So that's that for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.